the Lancer LG, you just check the meter here, set your camera here for a perfect picture every time. It's this way, man. Drop in the film. Get yourself a flash cube. Pop it on. Take one. Almost everyone has experience taking camera pictures. You know, snapping fun shots, posting them to Facebook, it's no secret how to do. But I want you to get much better at taking photos that tell stories. It's top secret, Carol. Top secret, eh, boy? Definitely. Top secret. Most amazing of all, the low price. Less than $25 for the complete outfit. Camera, flash bulbs, flash unit, and film. And you'll do more visual story making with the assignment bank. Be sure that the envelope says Kool Aid. If your family is like ours, you'll have as much fun together indoors as you do out. And now there's a new camera by Kodak that's just the nicest one I know to have around the house. It's the new Brownie Starmite camera, the most compact indoor and outdoor camera in Kodak history. Lock me in your arms forever. That's a place I want to be. And even make up some funny Valentine cards. This video is live. We are on the air. This is Alan Levine, Cogdog. I am coming to you again from the past. It's 1964. <laughs> I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona in a top secret resort by a swimming pool. I'm looking at a palm tree and a blue sky. And uh, what a great time to be in 1964 because uh, the internet has taken off because it's just been invented early. And um, we're going to be talking about what's been going on in DS-106 this week. And I got a bunch of people here to help me do it, so I don't have to say a whole lot. Um, so I've got four DS-106 students and a DS-106 teacher from another college who are going to kind of talk about uh, pretty much what's been going on this past week uh, and then start talking what I really want to get into, especially with Michael here, is to um, talk some about what is the visual storytelling that we're going to be doing this week. So first, I just want everybody to introduce themselves, and um, I don't know if you're in the same order as me, but I'll ask Dylan to go first. Hi, everybody. I'm Dylan. Um, this past week was a lot of fun. I uh, One of the things I liked a lot was the uh, listening to the audio story. I listened to one of the um, This American Life broadcasts, and initially I was a little skeptical about sitting with no visual for an hour. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I actually have it as a favorite now, that site, so I think That's I'll probably cool. be checking it out in the future. Had you, had you heard of it before? No, I had not, actually. So yeah. it was the first experience with it. Yeah, a lot of people don't. All right, well, welcome, it, and you're definitely going to get a chance to say a little bit more. Uh, sure. Chris is going to step out for a second. Caitlin. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm Caitlin, and I really enjoyed DS-106 this past week. Um, probably one of my favorite things was making the sound effects story. I was going into it, like, really intimidated by it, but it ended up being really um, interesting, and I'm really excited with how mine came out. So, I am, too. I, I loved your story. You did the running story, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's good because I hate running. I, like, despise running. Oh, I, well, see, me too, I, see, I see no point in running. It's got. Well, I'll, I'll stop there, but um, I, I do want to emphasize that nearly every um, every student I've had when we start the course, they say the unit they're going to dread is audio um, because they don't have any experience in it. And and right. not everybody loves it, but um, everybody gets the hang of it. And knowing how to do this stuff that you've done in audio this week, and you're going to come back to audio in two weeks when we start working.
working on radio shows is really going to help you when you do your video work as well because there's a lot of video that, that comes from doing audio. Um, mm. So next I'll ask Carissa to say hi. Hi, um, I'm Carissa and um, you can follow me at ChrissaVball08 on Twitter um, and the thing I like most was doing the radio bumper. Um, I just, it was my first kind of assignment that I did this week with audio and just adding the layers in and stuff. I thought it was really cool, and I had fun making fun with my voice and stuff, so I like that. So so tell me, and I, I should ask everybody to speak, I mean, do you guys listen to radio? I mean, is, is there a radio, like, that you listen to outside of this stuff? Um, I personally don't. I just always plug my iPod into, I listen to weird music, so I always plug my iPod in there and stuff. I can't really find anything that matches taste. Um so I don't, but I used to listen when I was little to um, shows, growing, you know, just like radio shows on the bus and stuff like that. We'd always want to listen. Wow. And we have Luke Lockwold who was sitting in. Uh, I'll say hello to Luke. But uh, next, I ask Sarah to say hello, and I'll, I'll come back to Michael last because he's like the special guest. <laughs> no, Luke is now. <laughs> now Luke is. But he's got, like, he's got like a weird face and he's not moving. So. That's called Hitler, idiot. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's just a Korean version. <laughs> okay, I bet you make a lot of friends that way. So uh, I do have... actually. Can I get yeah. Can I get a few of my friends to join? Uh, we actually this is a class going on, so this is not really a party hangout. So it's going to be probably kind of boring if you're not interested in my class. What is she class about? It's about digital storytelling, so and this is really a chance for my oh, students yeah, cool, to be yeah. talking. So um, I'm glad if you want to sit in and listen, but uh, I really want to give the mic to my students to talk. So uh, Sarah, why don't you say uh, a few things about this week? Okay, uh, hi, I'm Sarah. Um, this week, uh, I don't know. I one of the oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. One of the what? <laughs> Um, one of the audio stories that I listened to was called Doppelgangers, and um, I don't know, I was really freaked out by Act 1 because they talk about um, bung, which is like the industry term for hog rectum. And, um, the fuck? Yeah. And they're talking about how they keep it to use it for um, imitation calamari, and I was talking to someone in my creative writing class earlier about it um, because she's a vegetarian, and I was like, because of that story, I never want to eat calamari at a restaurant again. Yeah, but there's probably a lot of foods you you could do that too. But yeah, that that was kind of a surprise to I, I know. Wait, wait, I can't... Wait, wait, let me wait, just let me get across with this. They use anus to imitate squid. Yes. The yeah. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're getting a, a lot of interesting folks coming in. So, yeah, my students are listened to a couple episodes of This American Life, um, and this was an episode where they. They found out that um, supposedly in some places they use things you don't expect to be in calamari in your calamari, and the whole the whole theme of the song was doppelganger, so substitutes for things. So it was very interesting. So, but why it? <laughs> I, mean, like, I don't want shit in my kalahari. Yeah, I think I, it's probably like the shape of it or something when it's cut up. Fuck? And then, like, the consistency of it, maybe? I don't want to know what the consistency of an animal's <laughs> anus is. <laughs> well, well, frankly, once you fry anything. But I'm not really here to talk about the calamari. We're here to talk about uh, what, what went on this week. And then um, I want Michael to, to say a little bit about uh, the class that he's doing and kind of um, his experience with DS-106 because he's been with us for a lot of the ride. Yeah. Congratulations, everybody. How have you been enjoying it so far? God damn it, you are beautiful. All right, Thanks. folks, uh, I'm going to ask you respectfully. Uh, this is actually a class going on, so um, it, I, you're welcome to listen, but uh, please don't interrupt my students, otherwise I'm going to start rejecting. Um, got that, Luke. So uh, I actually started as, a, as, a, as an open participant myself. Um, while I was, I was teaching this back college, cat there? one of the... Um, <laughs> it's getting these, crazy. These, these people are going away. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, when I was lucky enough to participate uh, in what was called the Summer of Oblivion. And it, but it was back cat? Not, not unlike Alan's summer uh, boot, ca boot camp, right? Summer camp. 
And so now I've been teaching uh, DS-106 here in, in New York City for, this will be my fourth semester now. And uh, it's been pretty great. And, you know, I had never made GIFs before, and I'd never done a lot of things. I mean, I, my background is in video production and design, but there's always some, even as someone who is supposedly a professional in these, this media, there's always something new to learn, and that's what I love about it. So I'm excited to hang out with you guys. So uh, what is, you know, what's your take on visual storytelling? Because often I know, you know, in my experience with this, we kind of, it's kind of a fuzzy line between what's visual and what we're going to do next week in terms of, of design. Um, yeah. And um, I know for me, I, I usually, the visual stuff tends to be a little bit more based on photographs and modifying photographs. Uh -huh. um, where the, the design gets more into design elements and doing things completely in graphic software. Um, but even that's still kind of squishy. Right. Um, I think the thing I always first think about is probably, you know, storyboards, right? And I think your, like, five flicker, five card flicker is, is, is like a storyboard assignment where <laughs> visual storytelling... Uh, whether it's within the frame or across multiple frames, it's like just juxtaposition of imagery, right? And um, so within a frame, if you're thinking about how you arrange the content in a photograph, and I think Alan's done a great job of encouraging you. I, I looked at, Alan, your, um, <coughs> your uh, you know, breaking things into thirds and advice about taking photos from different points of view. So that's, that, that's a big part of it is like making that effort to contextualize the images that you see through the lens or whatever within the frame. But then that's what's cool about, you know, the five card flicker and, and storyboards is what does it mean to have one image appear before an, uh, another or after another and, and how we establish story through a sequence of images. So that's, I guess, the easiest ways to think about it for me, or that's storyboards. Cool. So for my, my students, because you guys are the co-host, um, uh, tell me a little bit like maybe what your your experience or interest is in, in photography. I mean, how do you come into this? Uh oh. There we go. Um, I know that I don't really have much experience when it comes to taking pictures and stuff, um, but I'm excited because I like looking at pictures and everything, and so I just never really have tried, so I think if I go and open up, and why not try? That's good. Anybody else? Where do you where do you guys come at in terms of your photography interest, or or or, or do you take pictures? I mean, I just I assume everybody takes pictures. <laughs> that could be wrong. It's <laughs> in my iPhone, but that's pretty much it. I was that's about to say, I think everybody takes pictures um, now that we all have um, smartphones, you know, cameras in our pockets. When I was younger, I think one of the first gifts I got was like a Canon, one of those giant old school cameras, and I would like run around like taking photos of um, like flowers and stuff, trying to make them super focused. And I remember yeah. it was a film camera. I would accidentally sometimes, exactly, except like old school, I would accidentally take a picture over a roll of film that had already been exposed, and get like that, oh, no. get that double X exposure. And I remember getting really interested in like photo manipulation, um, and I sucked at it because we didn't have Photoshop. So I started like messing around with like GIMP and paint and stuff, paintbrush. Um, so that's kind of where I came from, more like photo manip than actual like photography. Um, that's one of the things I was interested in. And um, uh, I mean, what, what kind of questions do you guys have about the stuff that you see on the list for this week? Um, I don't I don't have any questions, but I just think that it's going to be interesting. It seems like we have a lot more cre like a lot of creative freedom, especially this week because we get to pick the assignment that we want and things. So I'm excited about that. Important statement. I'm excited about the Valentine's card. Uh, I'm so excited for that. Like it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you said that. There's a great story on that. So um, Sarah Koontz is. Um, one of the earlier students who took DS-106, I think two or three years ago, um, be before I was even involved, and um, she pretty much has carried on. She's, she's had these uh, 360, she's done daily photos as she's traveled the world. She did a year where she just did a craft, um, like she made something every day, 
And wow. when, when I was teaching this for the first time last spring, um, she emailed Jim Groom, who was teaching the other section, and says, I want to give a challenge to your class. And she basically in interjected this Valentine's Day um, activity. And uh, we were teaching it in person at UMW, and it was a great thing that we called, um, we call them these blitz assignments. So we gave people like mm -hmm. 15 minutes to do this right away. So um, th there's something about that aspect of, of doing something like on the moment and on the fly that's really creative. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Does that sound strange? You mean um, like that kind of impromptu, spontane like spontaneity kind of driven yeah. creativity? Or yeah, oh, yeah. God, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, if I if I just told you, like, in the next ten minutes, find me um, a picture of um, you know a polar bear, you know, um, playing volleyball, you know, <laughs> um, you know, and, and then you got you, you got ten minutes to do it. You know, it's not about doing it in a fine art matter. It's about just trying to be creative, really, on your feet. That is where it's at. I absolutely love scavenger hunts, and when I was looking at the assignments, the photo blitz is exactly like a scavenger hunt. Has anybody done Gitchwas ever? It's the greatest international scavenger hunt the world has ever seen. You're supposed to find or create pictures of the most incredible things. Like, the photo blitz is like, take an ordinary thing and make it look supernatural. Well, it was exactly like that, except there were like 250 items on the list. And, um, I mean, it's basically like a photo blitz, except paper, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and you've done these. You've done these too, Michael, with your your shadow projects. Are you doing that one again? Yeah, we will. I, that for a blitz assignment, hopefully next week. That's a great. That was a lot of fun. We did a, a blitz assignment last year, where people made shadow puppets um, <laughs> in class, and I set up, you know, just some lights, or they could go wherever they want because we have this little studio next to our media classroom, and. Some of them, they went crazy. It was, it was a lot of fun. I can I wonder if I could. Cool thing is, they, if you even, I think, still look at it on Flickr because it was a unique tag, you can search for it as a DS106 uh, Shadow Puppet. Let me see if it still works. If it does, I'll send it out. And what I, I think it was really cool because, yeah, it does work. Um, here, I'll just paste it in the uh, talk. And um, it was a great blitz assignment because it was very accessible, you know, very easy for people to do, um, you know, with phones. And I loved, for example, if you see like the first four, people started to find these ways to interact with one another to create uh, uh, symbols and, and characters uh, from iconography. But then what was coolest too is I could see uh, Alan jumped in and a few other people jumped in uh, from the greater community, and I think that's what Alan's alluding to with the Valentines. That was fun. I remember that myself. Yeah, because we had people outside our class doing it, and, and because yeah. we had them tagging them in, in Flickr, um, it was kind of exciting to see people joining in. It's kind of, it's, it's a silly activity. I mean, uh, Sarah found these incredibly cheesy uh, cards that have no caption, and, you know, the things, they're, they're actually all there, all the ones that we did last year. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I was glad, you know, the timing worked out perfectly that we were going into visual um, during Valentine's Week. Yeah. yeah. What, do you, what do you guys think? Are you, are you thumbs up on Valentine's Day? Do we have any romantics here? I see this. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually, do, I do karaoke at the school, and we're, this week's theme is going to be um, don't sing a, sing a non-love song if you want to win a prize. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. A, a non love song? Yeah, which is pretty hard. Do those exist? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to look at, uh, I think also, uh, speaking again, like I'm looking at some of the assignments and ones that were popular. I like uh, assignments like Creep on a Movie Scene. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I think that's, again, that talks about that notion of juxtaposition. When we see that meme, you know the cat, the cat that's always like this? That shoves that pops into the up the, the corner of the frame, you know, and, and that's the like oh, you know, um, it's the the notion that you can you, you can change the, the the look. So in the creep on the movie scene, the example is uh, a dude who's hanging out with everybody from uh, Lord of the Rings, and in Lord of the Rings, they're all hiding from you know whatever the big red eye that's staring at them, 
and here's this college student just kind of smiling. And, and it makes, what's so great is it suddenly makes their seriousness seem silly. And that change, the juxtaposition of this additional out of place character changes the meaning of the original character's uh, facial expression. The expression doesn't change, it's just that there's this odd expression included now, and you're like, wow, don't those really serious, like, hobbits look stupid? <laughs> and so that's, that's what, I, what I mean by, like, within the frame and, and, and changing the meaning of the, of the story just by changing adjacent elements at times, and that, that's really cool. I, I'm glad you said that because those are some of my favorite assignments where um, people either are somewhat forced to or actually come about that idea about putting things together that you don't really expect to, to be together and, and that's some of the most fun things that, that we see happen with the, the DSM6 mm -hmm. like the, the cat breeding assignment which is really one of the, yeah, yeah. the silliest things that ever happened. Um, yeah. And, and, parent, and parent child head swap is a good one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. You know, when I first saw it, and and, and Boone Boone Gorgeous is a, yeah. a developer that that Michael knows um, proposed yeah. it, and it's just funny. You take a picture, like an old family picture of a parent and a kid, and you switch the heads, and it always looks bizarre. A baby <laughs> head on dad, and, and the baby with the dad with the beard. Um, you know, so um, and. On its surface, it's really silly, um, but you're playing. You know, I like the playing with reality, um, and you're man playing babies. with your, with your skills. Yeah, man, babies. Uh, there's a picture that I saw. Um, it's like when Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez are going out, and it's like them on the red carpet, and they swap the faces, but they did it so, like, they did such a great job of it. So like, you don't notice it at first until you're looking, and you're like, oh, like that guy's wearing a tux and has mascara on. <laughs> yeah. Now the stuff that you do this week, again, uh, a lot of it kind of can be done with simpler tools. I mean, there's some there's some web things. There's a, there's a editor built into Flickr. I don't know if you've seen it. It's called Aviary, um, where you can do things like put text on a picture or do some little special effects. It's really handy. Um, there's a great a web photo editor called Pixlr, and there's another. Yeah, I love support. Pixlr. Yeah, Pixlr is actually pretty sophisticated. Yeah. Um, and you, you can do a lot of the things that you know you think you can only do in Photoshop or GIMP. So Pixel is really good, um, but you don't have to really go deep with a lot of the photo editing on this stuff. But next week for the design assignments, um, you probably are going to um, want to be using um, something like GIMP um, or Photoshop if you have it. Looking at some other ones. Come on, Carlos. Oh. Well, tell me, tell me what's been going. What, what have you liked that you've seen among other students this week? I mean, in, in week five, I haven't really seen that much uh, action yet. But no, for, from that, you can talk about last week. I mean, in terms of the the stuff that you saw, or or um, people's blogs that you like, or um. um I, I mean, in my comment group, I love Tiffany's blog. It's so creative and dramatic, and you know, she's being, she has such great creative writing voice, and I think it's awesome. I really like following everyone in my group's uh, blogs. They really keep me interested and you know I'm like oh, I'm only gonna read a couple and then I'll, next thing you know it's like five blog posts later and I'm still reading so <laughs> yeah I like that aspect yeah I know that in my comic group um, Amber wow. had a really good um, radio bumper like when I was looking around for inspiration on mine I and I was doing comments at the same time I just like listened to hers and I was just like really <laughs> I was just like, oh God, I'm not going to get an A on this assignment. <laughs> I think it's at its best when you get inspired by other people's work. Um, yeah. I, have, I have an assignment that I'm going to put up there that I think will be a good two-parter, um, which is there's this um, blog where this guy, uh, actually I don't know if it's a man or a woman, posts what uh, they call graphic gifts. It's a graphic gift. And it's, they take an old ad and slice out, say, the car. And it's, it's not unlike a slide boy, uh, a Tim Owens slide guy. But the idea is making an assignment where people generate all these awesome, transparent background assets. And then, then, we can, then it can be incorporated into design assignments. And you could pull people's graphic gifts and make them into pieces of design. I think that would be fun. That's very cool. 
Yeah. I have a question. Who is it? You're Think allowed to troll. ask questions. Think troll. Who are you? Is she a hipster? Are you a troll? <laughs> yes. Next question. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion for this week, really quick? Yeah. I've learned that when I had I one of Dr. Whalen's classes, we did a lot of Photoshop in. And I learned very quickly that my trackpad doesn't like me in Photoshop. So get if you guys can, if you can get your hands on a like actual mouse, use it this week because that will help you a lot with like doing graphic work. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know. Somehow this got on the like the public. Uh, Google Hangouts, and we got all the freaks. But I've been, I've been trying. I, I ejected that think troll three times. Wow. Oh my god. So he's just gonna keep coming back. That's okay. I'm just gonna be blocking him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. I, 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 yeah. I, I agree. Like when, um, especially when you get into doing some really fine tuning, uh, photoshopping, um, and. and for me, a real key thing in the Photoshop or GIMP is, is like learning how to do um, s selections, which is more than using your mouse. But you have a variety of selection tools between the lasso and the, the magnetic thing in, in Photoshop and learning how the difference between a hard edge and a feathered edge selection and how to layer stuff. Um, the better you are at learning how to select things and being able to get rid of things, um, as as well as the uh, the clone brush is one of my favorite tools in, in Photoshop, um, yeah. where you kind of yeah. Where, I where just kind of want to throw out there the like the multi like not the not the, the kind of multitude of tools available. Time that it's really awesome because there's so much uh, that you can do with them because there's like so many different varieties. Um, there is a little <laughs> bit of a problem where you can be paralyzed by opportunity and kind of lose sight of the big picture because of all like the tiny little details. I've definitely done that before. I was having that trouble in Audacity as well when I was trying to, you know, pick the like the perfect sound and then like edit each and every little clip in it, like you get kind of like hyper focused sometimes. Which makes your project take like four times as long as it should. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't know, I think it's good when they take a long time. <laughs> no, I mean like a long time is good. Like I spent like hours on my uh, fifty second, like fifty seconds of my like radio show or whatever, like the my, my sound effect story. And I mean like I spent like four hours on it. It was ridiculous. Um, but you know, there's you know, maybe a fine line between like too much and just enough. Mm -hmm. Well, well, let, let's hear from you guys. You know, I, I know, I know very much. This is an intensive class, um, and you know, I don't want you to like neglect your other things. But, but uh, I mean, how how is the level of the the demand so far? Mm, I don't feel like it's that bad. I don't know. I mean, like it's definitely work, but if you like prioritize your time, I I, I don't feel like it's that overwhelming. Except when you initially read like everything you have to do for the week that's the only moment that I'm like oh my gosh there's so much to do but then like when you actually get into doing the work I don't feel like overwhelmed or anything about it so at least up to this point yeah I think having like the weekly checklist really helps me because I'm able to like organize everything and I know that I do my daily creates throughout the week and I watch the videos throughout the week um, because I was able to see the checklist and be like oh yeah this and that but I kind of accidentally forgot about the DS-106 radio show thing um, because I didn't read it clearly and so I didn't know we had to try to tune in when something was live so I kind of missed out on that. But yeah. It's okay. It's not highly critical. I, I will let you know that um, when we get past spring break we get into some sections where we'll be spreading things out over two weeks um, which in some sense give you a little bit of a relief from this something new every week. Um, but it also means that you're going to have to do two weeks of work. So if you're the 
the folks who wait until the weekend to do it, um, you might have a lot. But um, it, it does change the pace up when we get into that uh, latter half of the semester. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I find that the, the I find that having the weekend kind of is helpful because. Um, Poor Alan, you're on it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, you're fine. It's just I got I got a little distracted by like everything that's going on. Um, also, I'm like lagging, so I can't really figure out where I am. Um, but I I personally found that like in one week I'll do like everything on the same day, and be completely overwhelmed. Whereas on another week I tend to do everything like on Monday and Tuesday, and then spend a lot of time on like minute details like on a Friday night. Yeah, what were you saying, Dylan, about procrastinating? You, you like procrastinating? No, yeah, just... <laughs> the, uh, yeah. The two weeks, two weeks time for uh, assignments could definitely be uh, be dangerous if you wait till the last minute. I know I've tried pretty much every strategy of one week doing it a night or two before, and one week spreading it out and spreading it out is definitely the uh, the way to go. Hey, guys, liking your blogs? I I like having my blog. Um... I don't know. I just, I really like it. And I always show it to my family members. And I'm like, look at what I'm doing in class. Um, I, run, I run another blog for another one of my classes. It has to be a lot more professional. And I don't know. I just think it's kind of nice that I can be creative and have my own kind of creative writing voice in this sense rather than, you know, just being like this and that and this. You know, I can kind of take on any character with this blog. And I really like that. And again, you guys should know that. You're the only university in the country that does this, okay? Michael is actually doing it for his class right now, and and mm -hmm. I think I think maybe Emory University might be trying something like this, but no other university anywhere gives their students domains and and blog hosting. It's crazy. You think it's just normal because it's UMW, but it it is pretty special. Hot damn, right, Nancy? <laughs> I've realized this week that when I'm in tech week for a show, I need to do my work on like Sunday, like as soon as I get it, because I've been pulling my hair all week because I was in the shop for 10 hours this week. So. Yeah, it's hard. And, and just again, to let you know what's coming is we'll, we're doing visual this week and design next week, so it's kind of two weeks of doing graphics, so there'll be new Let's work every week. What exactly um, is the difference going to be when we move out of just regular visual and into like the design aspect? Design, you, you get into projects where you're doing more from um, purely graphic generation, less photo-based. Uh, generally, how I phrase it, but you're looking at not only visual storytelling, but you're you're creating. You're looking at things like font, colors, use of metaphors, shapes. Um, a lot of the design assignments are ones where you get to sort of remake something that exists. So we had a, we had a sample of that uh, about a week ago when that, that daily creating that came in about the Julia Child um, movie poster, um, which was kind of crazy, and it was a little bit more um, than actually we typically do in a daily create. Um, but those are the kind of things we often do in the design assignments. You kind of... Um, find something that exists. There's like one on, there's a DS-106 propaganda poster. So you find um, one of those old uh, posters from the, the 40s and 50s from the war years, and you kind of recast it with a new message or a modern message. So you're... We just, you're kind yeah, we just have one. Um, one of the daily creates this week was to take an old uh, movie poster and to redesign it to make it more accurate. Yeah. Um, so like someone had done like Twilight and, and like called it snack time. Because it was a picture of like Edward like looming over Bella. <laughs> yeah, th those were fun, and you know, the uh, I, I'm really um, I, it really pleases when people get excited about doing the daily creates. Um, and again, I said this in my email. Sometime around late March, they're going to feel like for some people, I'm so tired of doing these because um, you've been doing them for for many weeks, and it's like another one. Um, and I encourage you when you do the daily creates, like. You don't have to put a lot of time into them. I would, I do them as quick throwaways. Um, you can get carried away and do these crazy design posters, um, but you don't have to. It, it's almost just like practicing again, almost like those quick assignments of thinking on your feet. Like, you know, the thing out today, you know, take a picture of someone else using your favorite technology. You could do that in, in about two minutes, you know, if you just look for the opportunity and ask somebody. 
Actually, to go back on the movie poster, um, Dilly Creates, how do you do those? Because I was, like, trying to figure out how to do it, and then after, like, five minutes of Googling, I just kind of gave up. You want to take that one, Michael? Yeah, yeah. Once you start getting into that you know, more sophisticated remix in, uh, uh, in terms of so if you take a movie poster, the first thing you have to think about, it's like, gosh, I have to erase the title somehow, right? And how do I do that without literally erasing the image behind the title? And that's where, uh, you know, even Pixlr is great, because Pixlr has the tool that uh, Alan was describing as one of his favorites, which is the rubber stamp tool. The rubber stamp tool is a tool that allows you to, you know, copy near pixels and paste them to another portion of the image. So this is how photo retouching is done. So if you think of like, I had a big, say I had a huge pimple right here, okay? Well, there's this nice space with no blemish right here and I could copy the pixels here and then cover over it and it would basically match and I would now have clean skin and clean skin. So that, that's, the idea is like you, you find nearest neighbor pixels that, look, that would look like the image behind the text. And so it's a process. And then the next thing is like, oh, now I have to try to discover a font that somehow matches or looked like the original font, and now I get to change the title. And you'd layer that, that text over the, the, the poster uh, without, without, uh, with your new, with your new, new title. So yeah, it's, the, those, are, those do take more time. Yeah, and the, and the trick is really good at using the, the layers in your graphic editing program. Um, so, and some of it is just getting good at like finding the original source material that has stuff that lends itself to be recreated so a lot of times with the movie posters you can find something that has a good solid background that you can sort of paint over what's there and then replicate something on top um, right. sometimes sometimes you have to um, I just worked with a friend and, and she had a, a family photo that had um, her nephew's girlfriend who he broke up with so um, <laughs> I, took, I took her out of the family photo um, yeah. And, and you know you can start getting really good at being able to manipulate, and it's not always exact replication. Often it's the interpretation. So you don't always have to match the font. You can get something that's in a similar vein. Um, right. But the idea is you, you you're changing up the original meaning with a new message. Did that help at all? <laughs> uh, it's very complicated. I'm well, scared of the design week. Start, start with just taking an image in Pixlr. You know, go to Pixlr and look for the tool that looks like a rubber stamp. Like think of a traditional, uh, <laughs> it has like a, a handle and then a square, bo a rectangular bottom. And you, you and just look for Google uh, uh, a tutorial. It's just a like rubber stamp tool in Pixlr. And um, just play with it on any old image and you'll, you'll be surprised how fun it is. It, it, and, and, and not too hard once you, you start playing around with it. Yeah, I mean, typically what you're doing is you're like picking a source area or image and you're, you're saying, I want to copy everything like over here where this, um, where this brick might be and I start painting the brick over the window and I can make the window disappear and often you have to keep going back to the source area and then start painting over and, and it, it takes some getting used to but um, you'd be surprised at how much you can manipulate um, existing photos, uh, ads, and really change up their meaning completely. I mean, this, this class is going to teach you guys how to be fantastic foragers. That's what I'm good <laughs> at. Well, I think I took care of all the interlopers. Man, they were just coming left and right. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> hot. That was tough. Look on Twitter. There's a comment that you're playing whack a troll <laughs> yeah, basically, I started like banning anybody that came in with that with just a generic icon. <laughs> Has Talking Tina popped in yet? Talking Tina has not shown up. She she did save me at the airport last night, but um, <laughs> that's another story. You got to hang out with the dinosaur though. I took a picture. Oh, I forgot to post the picture of the dinosaur. I did. I did get pictures of the dinosaur. Dinosaurs. There's a dinosaur at the Chicago airport. Big That's brontosaurus, awesome. yeah, huge brontosaurus. Fills the terminal. <laughs> so any complaints? You guys are all being nice. You know, you're allowed to complain. Um, I have an idea, which, why don't, can we, like, maybe make an arc, like, 
try to figure out apps that would be useful for the class and like make a page, I guess, on our website for them. Because I finally got a lovely smartphone and I don't know what to put on it. And I kind of want to put on stuff that I can use for the class. Snapseed. What is it? Snapseed. I'm going to look for that right now. It's a free editor. That's a great idea, Nancy. So maybe I will um, I'll put up a... Actually, one of you could do it. Just create a Google Doc and set it to everybody can edit. Um, yeah. I'll add to it. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. I mean, because I now have iOS and Android, which is nice. But I know some people just have one or the other. That's good, and it's it's good to have some some apps for both. There's a lot of them that are free, and and frankly, there's so many of them that nobody really knows them. But there there are a couple really good yeah. ones. Um, you know, I, I can think of a handful I would highly recommend um, for your media work. I mean, I know Instagram and Flickr, and that's about it. Uh, I mean, SoundCloud has an app. Um, the thing that I like the most is that Canvas actually has an app now, which is phenomenal. I love it. And um, WordPress also has an app that I used for this class. That's yeah. good. So, so maybe Nancy or so, someone create a Google Doc. Um, I'm doing it right now. Okay. And just, oh, uh, so you know. Have to... in a sec. Okay. okay, cool. I love that. Bring ideas. You could teach this class. Give me a break. <laughs> I need to, like, make the Reddit guide. I just have been busy. I, like, I keep kicking myself. I keep saying I'm going to do it, and I just haven't. It's okay. It's it's been picking up. Um. <laughs> All right, you're loud, and I don't know who you are. <laughs> what do you guys think? Thumbs up, thumbs down. That guy has nice hair. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say thank you, but you're not talking to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything else for the the end of the show? Uh, um, these, these are kind of fun for me. I, I hope they're useful for you guys. Yeah. I <laughs> encourage you. I have one for you. I encourage you to sort sort when you're looking at the visual assignments. Sort them by views as a way of going through them as well as just the natural newest ones, um, because you'll likely see ones that have been done quite a bit. Um, and there's a lot of great stuff that's kind of buried in the historical archives of uh, DS-106 assignments. Yeah, what Michael's talking about, when you go to the assignment bank, so there's like 100 visual, 120 visual assignments. Like, how do you know which one to do? Um, so uh, there's views, which means people have looked at them. If you uh, start... Wow, somebody's got a really loud mic. Um, if you sort them by examples, that will list the ones that the most people have done, actually. Um, so you'll find ones that like 30 or 40 people have done uh, working examples that you can uh, look off of. Of course, it, like peanut butter is number one. <laughs> it's a classic. It's a classic. Yeah. All right, any other questions, you guys? Kind of shy. Can I check that doc to make sure it works? Say what? Somebody want, does somebody want to check the doc to make sure it works that isn't like signed into Google? Okay. Useful DS106 apps. Oh my god, my face keeps speaking. Yep. People are typing all over it. You might want to put a couple, you might want to put a couple headings so. Um, like Apple or, um, or or maybe kind of apps. I don't know how you want to organize it. You're all over it. I love this. I love yeah. new ideas. Uh, I love when you're screwing it up for people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cursor fight. I'll also put a um, post on Reddit and see what we got on our subreddit. Yeah. That's good. Don't give up on the Reddit, Nancy. It's gonna. Happen. I know. I just need to make the guide. I just. I have to learn music by tomorrow. I've got a senior project. I'm pulling my hair out, but whatever. Keep your hair. You need hair. I know. Can we say Instagram. Is that cheating? Is it no. cheating? Is it cheating? No. There's no cheating. No. no. It's, a, it's the camera. I think. It well, what, in compared to like an Instagram, what's nice about Snapseed is there's actually some fairly sophisticated photo editing. Like Instagram uh, 
has these preset filters, and it also, um, and you can choose just one. You do it, and it's done. But it also resizes every image to 400 by 400 pixels. So you don't, you don't get to maintain any of the original resolution of the image, which I think is pretty lame. Yeah. Um, Snapseed has a lot of uh, filters like uh, Instagram, but it also it allows you to do simple things. Like you can do uh, spot touching. So you could select an area, like say someone's eyes are darkened by you know, uh, shadow from the sun. You could select the area uh, of the eyes, and then you could, you could selectively brighten that particular area. Um, which is pretty cool. Plus, it a whole bunch of other stuff. It's, yeah. just it's got some amazing features. It just surprises me. Yeah, and I actually just recently got the um, the Adobe Fo the Photoshop Lite one, which is actually not bad. It's got a couple of useful things in there. Oh yeah, I can, you can't make a GIF with it, though, can you? There's you no can't make one. it. You can't. No. It's too I think bad. I about that actually. Um, we're using Photoshop, right? Like, just don't don't question. We're using Photoshop. Is are we getting that for? Is there a place to get that for cheap or for free? Or is it no, you're not, you're, isn't it no, like? There's no requirement to use Photoshop. We we never specify what software you use. So, some okay. people some people have it. Um, I I don't know whether the bookstore offers a, a student rate on Photoshop. Um, probably not. I don't know. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, expensive, but there are copies floating around the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Which may or may not be why I have Photoshop One on my computer. Photoshop One, that's a collector's item. Or no, I have I have Photoshop CS. Okay. The thing has been updated in like ten years. Um, but you can pretty much the the um, in the handbook. There's a link for tools, mm -hmm. um, and there's about seven or eight different options for graphics editors. Right. We, we've t we've touched on GIMP. Uh, which is not as you great gotta, to use as troll, Photoshop. Alan. <laughs> well, we got a troll. Whack that troll. Oh God, that. <laughs> Take, all right, get a clue, okay? We can. Can we like maybe update the manual at the end of the semester with the apps list? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, we'll make that whole section. It's a brilliant idea. Thank you, Nancy. No problem. Snaps. <laughs> All right, folks. Oh my thanks. God, he's back! Dang, he thanks a lot. Quit. Sorry, I'm I'm doing some other things too. I apologize. That's okay. Yeah, time to peel away. Um, go out and do some visual stuff this week. Um, Buy double yeah. Caitlin's. <laughs> pra practice your photo skill. Buy double Caitlin's. Bye. Oh wait. Oh my Michael, God, are you Caitlin. are you Caitlin from my group, Caitlin? Yeah, I'm Caitlin. <laughs> from my group. Your blog is just so cute. I can't see Oh, it. thanks. I left you a comment saying that basically your blog saved my life because I had no idea how to go about like actually writing something up. And then you had done it perfectly. And I was like, I'm just going to be like it. Very cool. Well, you've so thanks tuned, for the inspiration. You've tuned into a the whack-a-mole version of the GS106 <laughs> show. Yeah. Actually, this is kind of fun. I keep getting kicked out. Sorry, you don't have to apologize. I still, I still, we have to double, double Caitlin's in my book, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. All right, nice there. to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Okay, say DS106 for life. DS106 for life. Oh, oh my god, that sounded like a funeral dirge. <laughs> <laughs> and the troll is, and the troll is back. All right, bye he everybody. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. All right, going off the air. See you guys. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 <laughs> See you. See you, trolls. <laughs>